Mm-hmm. Hello? Where are we? Pog, wow. Hello? Pog, wow. Hey, you, you know friendly what? stream. Mad. Boing. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Whoa! The sun's out, Chatters. We're outside. How's the hand? Usable. We take those. Whoa! Guys, welcome to Animal Kingdom stream part. People Three, wow. I think. People Nico, hate. thank you for the 28 months. Doodlebug, thank you. Mad Mitch, thank you. Um, Welcome to the third. Can you turn the alerts down a little bit? Um, 96 is People pug, wow. <laughs> Finally evolved from a feather to a bird. Phoenix, thank you. Um, No, they were actually loud, sorry. Uh... Guys, welcome to the third Animal Kingdom stream. Chambry, thank you for the three months. I can't hear them now. Um, today, instead of talking about animal reproduction, we are going to be talking about animal defense behaviors. But this time, we have a green screen. Admit that's cool. There's a bee behind me. Y'all see that? Where'd he go? Nice flower. It's nice. So I have some some interesting stories. Oh, wow. Nightlife, thank you. Green is cool. I have some interesting stories to tell you guys about. No, it is a green screen. I would have space to take it off, but I don't really want you to see. You know what? You can take it off. Ah! Oh my god, where am I now? That's not what we meant to do. Stand by. Okay, now take it off. <laughs> well. Void. Uh, oh my god, my immersion. No! Okay, wow. you can put it back. Thanks. Oh! <laughs> Spoilers. Okay. <laughs> Guys, this is me and Space's first time using a green screen, so you're gonna have to... You're People gonna have to... Wow. My immersion. Kira, thank you. You're gonna have to uh, bear with us here. By the way, YouTube, welcome to my green screen stream. Uh, where, welcome, welcome to my green screen video, where I teach you guys about animal defense behaviors, and I'm in, uh, meadow, like and subscribe. It's gonna be a YouTube video. Sorry. Sorry, you have to look at the camera for YouTube, okay? I don't make the rules. They like it over there. Okay. Um, so, I have a few stories to tell you guys about- Ah! There's a bee! <laughs> <laughs> Chat, I have a few stories to tell you guys about animal defense defenses. Some really interesting animal defense behaviors. I would have done reproduction, but I am uh, I was not allowed to today, but that's okay. I will do it another day. And we will be practicing with the green screen today. Uh Rido, thank you. We'll be practicing with the green screen today to use it for the next uh, Animal Kingdom stream where I talk about reproduction. Again, understood, understood, understand. Everybody on the same page. I like stories, then you are in the right place, baby. Roger, how you guys doing today? I will be talking about bugs today, if that makes you feel any better. Maybe not bug reproduction. You good? Roger. Good day, good day. D oh, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Where are we now? This is fine. This is good, actually. Um, this is a good scene for our first our first, uh, our first story that I'm going to tell you about. Mm 
Nightmare. My pencil's dead. <laughs> it charges pretty fast. Okay, I'm gonna stall a little bit because my Apple Pencil is dead. You can't do anything about it, it's just gotta charge on there. I'm gonna stall because my Apple Pencil's dead. But that's okay, because we can chat a little bit. Um, thank you for the sub. No, it's okay. It, it really, it charges really fast, I swear. Um, wow. Alexis, thank you for the 20 months. Things to talk about today. Guys, yesterday I worked a 14 hour day. Yeah, thank you, it's been a while. Um, but it, you know, it felt really good. I felt really good about it last night. I cried uh, because I was worried about when I would have time to shower. <laughs> and I really needed to shower and I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Just crazy. That's bad. That's bad. But surely this week is gonna make it easier. This week is gonna make it easier. Right? Cause starting tomorrow we have our collabs wow. here, right? B bubs, thank you for the sub. Wait, I like this. I like this green screen. It's really fun. Um, wow. Hi, what a loser. Thank you for the two months. <laughs> it says username. Relax. People pop. Wow. Maya Hichia. Anonymous, thank you. I will remind you guys, starting tomorrow, we have our collab week of that will go down in history as the collab week of all collab weeks of collabs. Tomorrow, we have Pokimane here. And maybe some friends. Mm? I don't know if she's talked about that, so I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, tomorrow, we have Pokimane visiting Alveus, our queen, our savior. She will be here tomorrow at 2 p.m. Thursday. Friday, we have Angel's Kimmy at Alveus at 2 p.m. Okay, yeah, Pokey will be here tomorrow with Hewn and Aria. It has been leaked, excellent. Okay, this is seriously bothering me. It needs to go like under my arm. Stand by. Wait, how do I do this? Maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just do like this. Yo, Mayo. Would it be easier to write a geography presentation on the impact of humans or dogs on the human culture and society? There's definitely more to say Taps about humans, the streams. but dogs sounds more fun. People pop, wow. On Saturday, w Cloud, thank you for the 30 months. Cheer. On Saturday, we have X Chocobars at 2 p.m. CT. On Sunday, we have Foosley. At 2 p.m. CT. Wait. Did I mess that up? No, that's correct. No, what? Who did I? Wait, I, I messed it up. Wait, let's go back up. I think I did that wrong. On tomorrow, we have Pokimane at 2 p.m. And Hewn and Aria. Frick, I meant horses. Oh. Minus 10 lule. Then do horses. On... Tomorrow's Thursday. On Friday, we have Angel's Kimmy. No. On Friday, we have X Choco Bars. And then on Saturday, we have Angel's Kimmy. All right, all right, all right, all right. Tomorrow, we have Pokemon Hewn and Aria at 2 p.m. CT. Tomorrow's Thursday. On Friday, we have X Choco Bars at 2 p.m. CT. On Saturday, we have Angel's Kimmy at 2 p.m. CT. On Sunday, we have Valkyrie at 2 p.m. CT. <laughs> and on Monday, we have Foosley at 2 p.m. CT. And then on Thursday, we have Julian Salamita at 2 p.m. CT. Did you guys notice anything about those collabs? Anything, anything, any patterns? By chance? Uh, they're all at 2 p.m. CT. That's right. Be here at 2 p.m. CT every day for the foreseeable future. For a collab. Someone said what channel? Their channels. Collaborations, always on the other person's channel. How about ET? Then it, it's 3 p.m. Eastern. It's 12 p.m. Pacific. That's all I'm going to give you. You can do your own conversions. Or CST. Um, 2 p.m. CT. 
Okay, 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 okay. Excellent. So it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be really cool. They're all gonna be the animals. It's gonna be it's gonna be easy peasy, love and squeezy. I'm not worried about it at all. I think it'll be great. Um, and I'm very excited to have everybody here. And I'm ready. And I feel refreshed and alive and good to go and ready to rumble. So that's this week. Um, you may have seen I posted a teaser for something that's launching May 4th. Don't know if you guys saw the teaser on my Twitter. Some people think I'm doing a collaboration with Bigfoot. Interesting. I will leak something for you, for the people that are here right now. I'll leak a little hint. I am collaborating with someone and it is not a cryptid. It is a human being. The other leak that I will give you, because that wasn't a very good one and doesn't narrow it down at all, is uh, in some, in a way, in one way or another, I'm not gonna tell you how, it has to do with a uh, goat. Do with that what you will. Kugai, thank you for the four months. Okay. Now you guys ready to rumble? This is gonna, it's at 51%. This is gonna work similarly to the other Animal Kingdom streams, okay? Check this out. Ah! Never mind, I forgot it doesn't do that. Why is it so, like, not opaque? Oh. It was black. Oh, wow. Okay, that'll work. All right. So, um, it'll work similar to the other Animal Kingdom streams. This is a stream where I just tell you stories about some weird animals and the weird stuff that they do. Today, we're specifically about defense behaviors. Our first story today is the hot death ball of fiery fury. Anybody know what I'm talking about? A lot of people know, because you've seen this. Yes, I started with one that is uh, relatively common, or people have heard about it, yes. Today we're talking about uh, the Japanese honeybee. Look, he's cute. Hey, Look at him. Wow. Oxidase, thank you. Can you mute my alerts, actually? Thank you. This is the Japanese honeybee. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, we love honeybees. Um, they're uh, found almost exclusively in their native range in Japan, not to be confused with the European honeybee or the cringe invasive honeybee, okay, that we see everywhere. These guys have four bands on their butt. The European honey bands only, European honeybees only have three, okay? So this is Japanese honeybee. Uh, fun fact about Japanese honeybees. Oh, thanks. Um, Fun fact about Japanese honeybees, uh, the drones or worker bees, which are pictured here, have little pollen baskets on their legs for pollination. If you guys have seen bees with these little bits on their legs, they're doing work. They're working. They're carrying pollen around. They have little pollen baskets. How cute. Okay, love that for them. Do you guys know, oh. Do you guys know who the enemy of these bees is? A little spoiler. It's right here. The northern giant hornet. Stand by while we handle technical stuff. Is this going to go behind me or no? It don't matter. Is that one to one scale? No. No, it's not. Um, the nemesis, if you will, of the Japanese honeybee, or one of the nemesis is, is the northern giant hornet. Here he is. Bando, thank you for the seven months. Look, 
This is him to scale. Everybody, don't be afraid. He won't eat you because you're not a bug. But if one of you is a bee, you should be really, really scared. Um, these hornets are much larger than the Japanese honeybee. This is actually not a Japanese honeybee in the picture, but it's, it's a close enough size comparison. The hornets are much larger, right, than the little bees. So this little bee could not possibly take on this hornet on its own, right? So what does it do? Chat, what do they do to take on the giant hornet? Engage hot bee ball attack. What is the best way to beat up somebody that's bigger than you? You bring all your friends and you jump him. Am I right or am I right? You surround them. No, this is not bullying actually because the giant hornet just ate one of their friends. So it's not bullying, it's actually self-defense. This is an organized attack. Why is it called the hot death, hot death ball of fiery fury, you may ask? Because these bees vibrate their flight muscles to produce heat. A lot of it. A lot of it. How hot do you think it gets in there? We're going to run a poll here. How hot do you think these bees can make it inside this hot death ball of fiery fury? When all these bees are surrounding them, this is in... Okay, you can do it in Celsius if you want to be cringe. <laughs> Just type A, B, C, or D. Don't type, the, don't type the number. Just type A, B, C, or D. Do you think it gets to be 158 degrees in there? 117 degrees in there? 89 degrees in there? Or 47 degrees Fahrenheit? In Celsius, 70 degrees Celsius, 47 degrees Celsius, 31 degrees Celsius, or 8 degrees Celsius. This is a bunch of bees, sometimes thousands of bees, vibrating their flight muscles, making friction, producing heat to kill the giant hornet with heat inside the bee ball. I see a lot of people guessing B. 59% guessing B. It's 117 degrees Fahrenheit in there. It's 47 degrees Celsius in there. The correct answer is... B. They're able to flappy flappy so fast and so much that it becomes 117 degrees Fahrenheit inside the bee ball. Oh my God, it says it on the picture. <laughs> it's cr actually crazy that you guys didn't say that until after you did the poll. Actually a bunch of losers. That's insane of you. Okay, well, that's how hot it gets inside the bee ball. Now you know. So many people say it. I didn't see any of you say it. Uh, you want to see what this looks like? We got a video for you. Hmm? Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Check this out. Food. A scout hornet <laughs> discovers Yamaguchi's wild bees. <laughs> <laughs> He's huge! The honeybees fan an alarm pheromone through the air. This alerts the whole hive to the hornet's presence. The scout smells the honey within. A prize this <coughs> rich is worth scent marking. I'm doing my job protecting the hive. But unlike the European bees, these Japanese bees do not attack. Instead, they lure the scout inside. Shelf fans, it depends on what port you're in. Still, the bees hang fire. Then one is caught. Y'all see that? It's the signal the others have been he waiting started for. It. He started it, now they're gonna finish it. Yeehaw. It's actually really, like bees are really small, but this concept is horrifying. <laughs> Getting attacked by this many bees and then just like flapping their wings and making you so hot that you die is really scary. It does look like cancel culture. 
Surrounded by vibrating bodies, the hornet at the core of the bee ball begins to overheat. The bees have the advantage. A heat tolerance two degrees Does above it not that of their enemy. Also hurt the bees. At 46 Interesting degrees that you Celsius, that. the aggressor is roasted alive. The Japanese honeybees are tolerant of two degrees Celsius higher than the hornet. So they stop making it hot right before they die. The wild bees have spent millions of years but him, he can't with take the enemy. That. That's why they alone have developed this extraordinary survival strategy. Kind of cool, huh? We can go to the next, uh, the next one. What do you guys think about that? I know some people have heard about the, the hot, fiery bee ball of death, but now you know a little bit more about it, maybe? Kind of fun. Interesting, right? Kind of crazy. We're in the desert now. This one, I put as my second animal, but it turns out I think this is my favorite animal of uh, the whole presentation, or the whole stream. Um, for this here, we have uh, our story for, for right now is the eyeball blood gun. We're gonna talk about the eyeball blood gun. No, we're not talking about worms from Dune, although I understand why you would say that. Some people are saying lizard, some people are saying toad. We are talking about uh, the horned lizard or horny toad, sometimes called horn, whoa. Sometimes called horn toads, stand by. Oh, sta oh stand by. There, hold. Horny toads, horn, horned lizards, or horned toads. Um, we have these in Texas, they're native in Texas, and they are very, very cute. <laughs> Look at him. I realize my title is a bit of a spoiler. But why is this called the eyeball blood gun, you ask? Any, any guessers? Any ideas? Uh, blood, he shoots blood with his eyes. Ah, oh, spoilers, he does do that. Um, but before we get to that defense, um, one of his many defenses is camouflage. Oop. That's not, well, so you can't even tell that he's there. This was not, it was, it was supposed to be a different asset, sorry. <laughs> okay, one of his many disguises is camouflage. So you can't even tell that he's there. <laughs> Admit this is pretty impressive. All right, they don't actually live in like deserts like this. Like they live in Texas. Um, but they're very good at camouflage. Um, they got little spikes, actually kind of, actually kind of sick, actually really good at what they do, really good for rocks, really good for trees, very great, very excellent, excellent, horny totes. Um, another one of their forms of defense is puffing up their bodies to appear larger, which a lot of animals do. A lot of animals will like go like that so they look bigger, like go like this so they look bigger, you know. Um, it's just kind of funny when the horny toad does it. <laughs> Um, cause they look like that. <laughs> I think it's just because they got like short necks and like short legs and a pretty round body, but they do, they'll puff up to be like, don't touch me. Uh, that's to scale. This is a young one, I think, but they are pretty small. Um, he's, yes, he is. He is a little jacked. Um, the other, the, the coolest thing perhaps about horny toads, um, is that they're capable of uh, auto hemorrhaging. Which is exactly what it sounds like. Um, auto hemorrhaging is the voluntary exudation or ejection of blood, which is uh, nauseous or poisonous to protect against enemies.
so they have two constricting muscles that line the major veins around their eyeballs here. Okay, um, when the muscles contract, they cut off the blood flow to the lizard's head um, or to the lizard's heart, and then the blood continues to flow to its head. And then it floods the ocular sinuses here. And then uh, the building up of pressure causes, um, causes a bulge in their eye. And then it builds up. And then they can shoot it. You guys know how far they can shoot this blood from their eye? Mind you, this is a lizard like this size. How far do you think they can shoot it? Six feet, 10 miles, 20 miles, one foot, 15 meters. Five feet. They can shoot the blood five feet into the air. For reference, I am about five feet tall. So this is how far they can shoot it from my feet in this picture to my head. Tiny little lizard. Isn't that crazy? Also, I had said that the blood is um, poisonous when they shoot it out. Another fun fact about it is that it's, uh, it's got like a repulsive taste, um, which is another fun trick up their sleeve. It's, it's repulsive because what they eat is a venomous harvester ant that tastes really bad because they're venomous. So when they shoot the blood out of their eyeballs, it tastes really yuck. So if they get it in the predator's mouth, then why do they have an emote for that? What is that? It's a meme? I ripped this from Google Images. I had no idea. That's a global BTTV about? I swear to God, I had no idea. That's crazy. Um... Okay, well, one more, one more shout out to these guys. Oh, this is the ant that's venomous that they eat. Real size. They're cute, huh? You guys want to see them in action? Let's see them in action. Let's see them in action, shall we? It's so funny. They are so funny. A million years of reptile evolution has created some very weird body parts. But when it comes to defense, one species has an eye on the prize for weirdest. <laughs> the horned lizard has three ingenious ways of dealing with predators. <laughs> Its jagged body Look, provides where perfect is he? camouflage where is against keen-eyed aerial hunters. You can't see him. But oh my this god, this is so hunts funny. By I love smell, this video. Not sight. Spiny armor isn't enough to deter a hungry snake. Watch this. So the five-inch lizard puffs up its body to almost <laughs> double its size. <laughs> this is a great defense. First of all, because when they puff up, it makes them look more intimidating. And secondly, if this snake tries to eat this lizard, it's gonna get a mouthful of spikes. Oh, this is a great After defense. After puffing itself up, the lizard literally flips no! out. <laughs> These no. crazy moves are more than enough to freak this He's enemy just relaxing. out. relaxing. But doing a turn as a fat break dancer won't work on something as big as Fido here. Now what will he when employ? With what is that shot? Times that was so random. Himself, this spunky critter doesn't run or hide. 
It they green screened him the weirdest defensive body parts in on front the of planet. It's look, all in here's the, the build up. Ah! As someone who studies lizards, this surprises even me. The way the lizards do this is by reducing blood flow out of the head and allowing blood pressure to build up in the vessels all over its face. And at a certain point, the blood pressure in small vessels in the lizard's eye build up so much that they burst, allowing a stream of blood to shoot out. This weird weapon can shoot a stream of blood up to five feet into the air, averaging around 10 times in succession. I haven't heard of anything else in nature that can do this, and this is weird. Not only can the lizard control when that blood shoots out, they can also shift their eye muscles to control the direction of where that's 10 times goes. in a row, baby. Bang, 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 bang. Dogs will eat almost anything, but a mouthful of lizard blood is too much for this one. This dog is running away because this behavior is not just projectile warfare, it's chemical warfare. That fluid is especially repugnant to dogs. This really is a case of getting the evil eye. Ew! Excuse me, would you mind taking no! out the trash? Oh, no! No! Problem. Thanks. Mm, yes. Yeah, no free ads! Need Verizon. Get the new iPhone 15 Pro with Get tons of storage. Of there. So you can take all the pics. What do you guys think? Isn't that crazy? What the heck? Honestly, I'm really happy for him. I'm glad he can do all that, and I hope nobody eats him, because I really like them. I really like horny toads. I think they're so funny, and I think they're so cute. All right. You guys ready for the next story? Our next story is called Boiling Butt Rocket. Now, do any of you have any guesses as to what this is about. Poop. Poo poo. Taco Bell is crazy. Skunk, that's a good guess. Yeah, a lot. Some of you have it. Some of you have it. Um, this is about the Bombardier Beetle. This guy. It's just a little beetle. It's just a little guy. Very, t very small. Very small beetle. They inhabit um, all continents except Antarctica. This guy. Ooh. This guy. This guy. This guy's all over. The He's on top of the world. This is the world. Um, he is in every continent except Antarctica. Um, most species of Bombardier beetle are carnivorous. There are over 500 species, though. So there are a lot of them, and they are everywhere. Okay? Why is this story called the boiling butt rocket, you ask? Why do you think, chat? What do you think that means? What do you think that little beetle can do? Poop. He shoots hot poop. Climb trees, glow in the dark. Weaponize diarrhea. Go pew pew with his butt. He shoot hot fart. Close. They shoot boiling liquid from their anus. A duh. Here's a picture of a Bombardier beetle shooting boiling liquid from his anus at this person's fingy. Does it hurt? Yeah, dude. <laughs> yes, it hurts. Yeah, it's boi- it, yeah, yes. How do they- how do they boil it? <laughs> okay, so 
Check this out. Check this out, right? Check this out, right? This is a little bug. This is the beetle. Okay, here are his legs. This is a Bombardier beetle, right? Inside of this little tiny beetle, they have an elaborate internal network of reservoirs and chambers to synthesize poison blasts, okay? They have two separate chambers here. One chamber, two chambers. In this top chamber, they have hydro Okay. In this in this chamber, <laughs> they have hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> you guys ever done a volcano, like a science fair volcano? Right? Baking soda vinegar inside of a volcano. No? Why are you all saying no? Okay, you know what I'm talking about? Okay. The point, it, you know what I'm talking about? It's a science fair project where you have a volcano and it's like paper mache and you put vinegar and baking soda in and a chemical reaction happens where it like spews out a bunch of foam so it looks like a volcano, right? So inside of this tiny little freaking beetle, there's two separate chambers and then there's a, a valve and there's a special chamber here, a third chamber that has an enzyme in it. Enzymes catalyze reactions. Both of these things go into this chamber <laughs> with an enzyme in it. The volcano is happening inside the third chamber and gases rapidly expand and they produce heat inside that chamber and then it exits out of their butt. How fast do you think it exits? In miles per hour, please, Americans. I know it's not just America. 50, 100, 30, 400, 70, 200, 7, 88, 22 miles per hour, which is still, it's faster than I can go, okay? It's still really fast. Comes out really fast, kind of crazy, 22 miles an hour. I hyped it up too much. How hot do you think it is when it comes out? You can do Celsius or Fahrenheit. I'll take both answers, just say what you think it is. 313 Celsius, 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 120 degrees Celsius, 40 degrees Celsius. 6 degrees Celsius, 120 degrees Fahrenheit, 120 degrees Fahrenheit, 60 degrees Celsius, 150 degrees Fahrenheit, 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius, 100 degrees Celsius, ah! <laughs> My reaction was so slow, I would be so dead. Ugh! I'd be so dead, so bad. I'd be so super dead right now. 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius, are you kidding me? Also, imagine what I just said. Imagine what I just said here, or what I was just talking about. With the chambers, in this tiny little bug, in this little bug, in this little, in this little, in this little bug, one chamber, two chambers, go into a third chamber where the reaction happens, burp, 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 exits at me. Isn't that crazy? Is he burning himself? No, he's fine but also they can aim it. 
They can aim with their butt. Crazy. Crazy. Oh. Ah. Spoiler. You guys want to watch a video? How is he fine? <laughs> Ask him, not me. I don't know. That's such a funny, like, get out of jail free card as an animal educator. Okay. Watch this. He's aiming, dude, see? The bombardier beetle is one of nature's most improbable creatures. For some, it throws a monkey wrench into the whole idea of evolution. This beetle is a walking powder keg. <coughs> that cloud you see is the result of a lightning fast chemical reaction inside his body. Attacked, the beetle sets off the explosion. Oh, a spider's in for it, dude. Releasing no. a boiling hot, stinging poison that sends his enemies running. No. He can even aim it. What the heck? Dude, he actually aimed for me. That was this crazy. potent mixture inside the beetle is made up of three main ingredients. Mix the first two of them together, and nothing happens. But can throw you in believe the third that this is in boom. one little tiny bug? Isn't that crazy? It's so like a car. Has a trick. He keeps these ingredients separate inside his body. From an evolutionary standpoint, that's what's interesting. In fact, people have been scratching their heads over this for decades. How did this complex system evolve over time? Ow. Wouldn't earlier generations of beetles have blown themselves up like a bunch of amateur bomb makers? To some, this beetle's very survival is proof that the whole theory of evolution is wrong. Okay, that's a crazy thing to say. But it turns out there is a way this oh, system saved. could have evolved gradually. Remember that third ingredient? It's an enzyme. <laughs> it's like a spark that sets the explosion in motion. And enzymes evolve. At first, maybe this one wasn't so dangerous. But gradually, it became more potent more specialized, Ow. more explosive, as the beetle's body changed to contain it. Scientists at UC Berkeley are trying to figure out how this system came together. They think one of those explosive chemicals evolved Look from the small same are. raw materials as the beetle's shell. That happens a lot in evolution. It's called exaptation, one body part repurposed for something else. The improbable bombardier beetle. Living proof that what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. Hi again, it's Amy. Put him down! I hope you think Deep Look is Grabbing the him with your hands is crazy. If so, subscribe. Click that button. Should we get some? <laughs> At Alveus. And I can hand them to collaborators as a surprise. <laughs> and then they start shooting out boiling butt poison. And they're like, oh my god, what the heck? And I say, April Fools, <laughs> it's a Bombardier beetle. Boiling butt rocket. What's your guys' favorite story so far? The blood one, blood lizard. Before you change scenes, the next story that I have for you is about this guy. Who is it? Potato is wrong. Leaf monkey. Tree frog, woodpecker, flying squirrel. Guys, actually try. <laughs> Kitten McNugget. Congratulations, you are correct. This is about the sea cucumber. 
Uh, yes. The sea cucumber, our friend. Look, I'll put him in here for for everybody to to see. There he is. Now he's in the scene. Yeah, some people might already know this. You've probably maybe seen pictures of it. Uh, there are 1,250, 1,250-ish species of sea cucumber. Um, they are marine animals. They feed on algae, waste particles, um, small marine animals uh, to make, to break them down into smaller things, smaller particles, and then they get recycled back into the ocean. They're very important. Those are not plants. No, sea cucumbers aren't plants. They're living beings. They don't have brains, though. Um, they're found virtually in every marine environment in the world. So they are all over the place. Um, question. What do you think that this is? Kelp, seagrass, seaweed. You're all wrong. It's organs. Stupids. It's the organs of a sea cucumber. Ah, oh, this is a sea cucumber, just like my drawing. Do you guys like him? Life size. I'm sitting on him. But actually, it would hurt to do a full squat. I thought he was higher up. Thing is massive. This is not life size. They're actually much smaller. They come in all different colors, though. All different colors and sizes. Here, look, now I'm sitting with him like he's my dog. This nice little guy. Little sea cucumber, so cute. But wait, what if he hates me? What if he hates me, then what? He's mad that I touched him, so he expels his organs. <laughs> he's like, don't touch me. So he self eviscerates self eviscerates self evisceration is the process of removing one or all of the organs from the inside of the body would not recommend googling self evisceration actually super gnarly because it's so uncommon it's not something that happens in the animal kingdom often uh you get a lot of human stuff it's not chill it's actually super not chill but this is something that doesn't happen very often obviously because what the hell is this have you ever seen this? Maybe you saw this in the ocean. You'd be like, oh, it's a little m m to me. Cute. Look at he's just hanging out in the ocean. Wrong organs. But why? Because if there's a predator who's trying to eat him, then he expels all his organs and they're poisonous. And then he can entangle the predator in his organs and kill it. Or it's just very distracting because you're like, what the hell? Imagine you're like going to bully some kid and he expels all his organs. You're going to be like, what the hell? What are you doing? What the hell? And you're going to be so confused. You're going to forget to eat him. Right? How do they survive that? I don't know. They do it and then it just goes back inside. <laughs> they do it to protect themselves and they just put it back. Do you guys think that I'm a good educator? <laughs> My analogy went a little bit off the rails. I'm trying to be relatable and cool, you know? You know? <laughs> Is that the last asset I have? Look at this! Oh! <laughs> Look at it! Ah! <laughs> I didn't realize I made this one so big. Wait, it kind of looks like uh, Princess Peach. <laughs> right? 
Don't have to look at this nice little lady. Or like, uh, Khaleesi, maybe? Anyway, these are its organs. Oh, and they're coming out of his anus, obviously. <laughs> Sorry. You guys wanna see what it looks like in action? <laughs> Don't say that's foul, it's actually really cool. Watch this. Watch this. Oh my god, there he is. He's huge. He's huge! Another one. So many different shapes, sizes, colors. So cool. These animals may look like boring lumps. Caleb. But sea cucumbers have all sorts of surprises. Look, he's eating. Yum, yum. This hairy sea cucumber takes several hours to burrow into the sand. Its body now safely hidden. It's time to eat. It have you guys ever seen these in the ocean? Tentacles. Pictures, Any maybe? Any microscopic morsel it finds gets pulled down into its mouth. Nom, nom, nom. A miniature forest of cukes filter the water clean of organic debris. Yeah, it's a sea but cucumber. But the first sign of trouble, the forest vanishes to Look feed at another time. It's a guy buried under there. That's just his mouth. He's eating. It knows no it's fear. It's not an anemone. Possibly because it has no brain. Instead, a nerve ring around its yeah. mouth tells it when to move. He unfortunately when to has fight, no brain. And when to eat. That's okay. In the animal kingdom, there's no emergency rooms, band-aids, or kisses for mommy. <laughs> Fighting <laughs> takes guts. <laughs> for this cuke, that's no metaphor. A fish <laughs> nips at its backside. The wrong Oh, mistake. Side. Huge mistake. That's his anus. Wait, check this out. Here come his organs. Wait, I'm in a really bad spot right now. It uh -oh. expels its guts out of its very own ring of fire. Uh -oh. Their filaments are sticky and toxic. Uh -oh. If the fish gets caught, it might die. Bota's live! Bota's live! The fish girls. wants no part Thank you of this so fight. much. Guys, this is a sea cucumber expelling its organs out of its anus. As a resourceful lump. As a, as a method of defense. What'd you think? Welcome to the stream. Today I'm teaching you guys about crazy animal defense behaviors. Um, we've learned about a couple things so far. Um, one, the hot bee ball, fiery f ball of fury, flame, death. Japanese honeybees surround hornets and they vibrate their ring wings really fast up to 117 degrees Fahrenheit inside the ball and they roast the predator inside a bee ball. There are horny toads also called horn lizards that shoot blood out of their eyeballs. We talked about that today. We talked about sea cucumbers expelling their guts and we talked about the bombardier beetle, the boiling butt rocket beetle, if you will that shoots boiling poison out of its butthole. So if you wanted to learn about that, you can go back a little bit in the VOD. But right now we're on uh, sea slugs, or sea cucumbers. Um, what do you guys think? Did you already know that? Did you already know that sea cucumbers expel their organs, their poison organs out of their anus to entangle predators and scare them away? Are they edible? A lot of people eat sea, sea cucumbers, yes. Aren't you scared of water creatures? Yeah, I am a little scared of the ocean. Yeah. All right. Our next story of the day, chatters. Um, you can switch scenes if you'd like. Uh, is called... Ant. Go. Boom, boom. Now, this could mean multiple things, couldn't it? This could either mean that the ant goes poopy or that it explodes. 
which do you think it is? Both. <laughs> Both is a good guess. Um, I'll give you a hint. It's not both. Um, this is the Malaysian exploding ant. Kind of, kind of answers your your question there. Um, this is the Malaysian exploding ant. They live in the treetops of Borneo. They were discovered in 1935, so they're kind of hot off the press a little bit now. Kind of like a fresh new drop. Exploding ants. Um, it's a pretty normal looking ant, right? Normal looking, like a reddish uh, brown ant, but they are not normal in function. Can you imagine discovering this ant and finding out that uh, when threatened, they flex their abdomens so hard that they explode? <laughs> Sorry, it's actually sad. I should not be laughing because it means death for the ant. This is the ant in question. Yes, this is life size. Yes, I did this to scale. Yes, this is how big they are. I'm joking. They're ant sized. They're very small. But uh, yeah, they, when they get pissed off, they flex so hard that their abdomen bursts. Anybody ever do that? Anybody ever at the gym and just flex so hard that you just explode? because you're so jacked. What does this actually look like? It looks like this. Pretty graphic. I should have given you a content warning, I'm sorry. Relatable, anybody? What does it actually look like? like this, kind of yuck. Um, when the ant explodes, this is an ant defending its colony against another ant that's trying to attack it. They flex really hard and their abdomen explodes and they secrete a yellow sticky toxic goo that smells like something that you wouldn't expect. Let's run a poll. What do you think the sticky goo pictured here smells like? This is the weirdest stream ever. What do you think this yellow sticky goo pictured to my right smells like? Donuts, cherries, pizza, or curry? You can type A, B, C, or D. Let's see what you guys think. Personally, I think it would smell like mustard, but that's not an option. Donuts, cherries, pizza, curry. All right, a lot of people guessing cherries and a lot of people guessing curry. Cherries is an interesting guess. There are millipedes, um, cherry millipedes. Actually, their secretions smell like almonds. Um, but I've also heard, I think they also smell like cherry and they produce cyanide. This is, so that's a good guess. Um, but the correct answer here is D. It smells like curry. Why? See, I asked why, like I was gonna be a teacher and I was going to tell you why, but I'm actually asking you why, I don't know. I don't know, it just does. I don't have a video for this, for this story because um, there's not really a lot of great footage of it happening. There's like some, some CGI footage of it happening, but it's exactly what it sounds like, right? I mean, they literally, they take their little bodies and they flex really hard and then they pop. They, they make a um, audible popping noise. There's someone studying them right now. There's a gal out there studying them right now. I'm sure she'll come up with some crazy stuff and it'll be really cool. And then you guys can learn about it when she learns more. But again, this is a relatively recently discovered ant, 1935. Um, and there aren't a ton of people studying bugs because they're underappreciated. Chat. You could be an entomologist if you wanted to. We need more of them. I'm a sample them. Cool. Um, all right, that's the story of bugs. What's the next one? 
What do we have next? Hmm. Uh huh. This one I like to call our Nickelodeon Nightmare. What do you guys think? Who do you think? Who do you think this could be about? A Nickelodeon nightmare. Potentially bad timing on this title. Didn't think about it until just now. How about instead of guessing who you think it's about, uh, you guess what this animal is? Who's that? A snail. A turd. A tapeworm. Interesting guess. A horse. A roly poly. A monkey. A worm. We got birdologist is correct. This is none other than the hagfish. What the hell is that? <laughs> Anybody say that to themselves or in chat? What is this? Uh, who is this? First of all, stop saying you because he's right here. What's wrong with you? Second of all, uh, this is an eel shaped jawless fish. They're sometimes called slime eels and I want you to be nicer to him. He's cool. I have terrible news for you. If you don't like what he looks like on the outside, you are super not going to like what he looks like on the inside. Before I move, I want you guys to remember that if you can't say something nice, you don't need to say anything at all. Okay? This is the... <laughs> This is the mouth of a hagfish, okay? It's not, stop, it's not that bad. Why'd you make it so big? Because it was a really high resolution photo and I was maximizing its potential as a stream asset. Their mouths have two pairs of teeth uh, on, a, on a cartilaginous plate that protracts and retracts for grasping food. So they can, not only is it like that, but they can also go You know? I think it's cool. Kinda cool. Kinda cool. Mr. Hagfish, my friend. Okay, if you don't like this <laughs> about the hagfish, you're really not going to like one of its best adaptations. Um, hagfish can produce copious amounts of slime. <laughs> this is also called the slime eel. Um, they can produce co copious, <laughs> like so much, <laughs> like way more than, than you would think that they need to, like copious amounts of slime. Um, from specialized glands. They're really, really good at, at producing slime. It's actually very important for them. You don't need to throw up. It's fine. This is just a picture. Don't be a baby. Close your eyes. Turn your monitor off. Okay, we're just here to learn about hagfish. I like them. <laughs> Someone said slime from specialized glands. You need to wait until the next Animal Kingdom stream to make jokes like that, okay? Not right now. Speaking of which, though, this is what their slime looks like. Um, <laughs> it's <coughs> Hackfish slime is more durable and more retentive than any other slime produced by any animal on Earth. 
It is incredibly thick and viscous. I would like to shout out the, uh, I'd like to shout out, I'd like to shout out the 6,900 viewers that I have at this moment. Thank you for being here today. I am blessed. Hello. No. You want to get in on this? <laughs> what is it? Dude, it looks like you're in the womb. <laughs> what is it? You don't know what this is? No. It's a Nickelodeon nightmare. What animal is this from? Don't look at the monitors. What is that supposed to be? Like, what organ is it? It's not an organ. It's another animal? No, it's from an animal. Is it, is it babies, offspring? No. It's a hot dog producing animal. I don't know. The what? It looks like hot dogs. His fingers? That's just a dude holding it. Oh, you're talking about this. I'm talking about, what do you mean I'm talking about this? Yes, what's, cut, what's taking up the entire screen. What is that? Oh, that's a jellyfish. No. It's not an animal. It's, it's in, it's uh, a... No context to even what you're doing. What are, what are you even doing? Hagfish. It's slime from the hagfish? Yeah. What are you doing today? I'm teaching them. <laughs> about what? <laughs> uh, animal defense behaviors. So what does this hagfish do other than... You want to see its mouth? Sure. I'm in its mouth. <laughs> I'm refraining from funny jokes. Uh, looks great. Yeah. What is it? It looks like a snail with teeth. I think he's cute. It's a slime eel. Also called a slime eel. It's a, it's a jawless fish. I like him. Things of nightmares. No! Yeah. If you don't have anything nice to say, get off my stream. It's not, not a bad thing. Nightmares are cool. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Another interesting thing about hagfish is they can tie themselves in a knot to escape predators. They just tie themselves in a knot and then they slip out. I don't have any footage of that, though. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. Okay, let's go back to their slime if we could. So their slime uh, is extremely durable, extremely retentive to the point where people are studying it for textiles. Um, like people are thinking of using it to make stuff because it's like, it goes crazy. Um, when disturbed, hagfish expel slime. If you have gills, this stuff is like big problem. If you have gills and you get coated in this and it wraps around you, you die. Hagfish choke predators with slime by expelling it and clogging their gills. You wanna see what it looks like? You guys have to stop related, you brain rotted, you're brain rotted, it's, it's you, it's not me. Your brain rotted, your brain rotted, your brain rotted. Check this out. Gill clogging slime secretion in hagfishes, a defense mechanism against predation. There's a hagfish, he's eating. Let him be. Let him eat, yum. You just, you just wait until someone bothers him. Check this out. Don't bother him. Don't do it. He's bothering him. He's bothering him real bad. Look at all that slime coming off. <laughs> you see that? Success. Again. He's choking him. He's choking him. Check this out. Ew. <laughs> Ew. Ew. 
Ew. Again. Don't. Ew. <laughs> Ew. It's very effective. 14 attempts to prey on hagfish by various predators have been observed. None successful. Not a single attempt successful that they recorded in eating a hagfish because the slime goes so crazy. Because he's so quick with it. What the heck is this? We're drowning. That's okay, we're good. 100% win rate. Dude, pretty sick. Do we have one more? No, story. Two more. All right, next up. <laughs> you can change the video. This one I probably should have done earlier in the stream because we're getting a little close to the um, bit where they didn't want me to talk about stuff, but uh, this one, I have titled, What a Rush! Stockfish thing with the five gifted subs. This one's called, What a Rush! What do you think this is about? I'll give you a hint. Uh, we are in the Amazon rainforest right now. Never seen a 113. Good guess. Drugs. No. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> that's a funny angle that also would not be appropriate. Uh, but that's not it. You got to think. Got to think a little more abstract than that. What a rush. <clears throat> We're talking about the... Brazilian wandering spider, also called a banana spider. They're native to Brazil, um, and they're named for their tendency to wander and search for prey instead of sitting and waiting. Okay? These guys are venomous nocturnal hunters if you like frogs. Fair warning. They're venomous nocturnal hunters. Uh, they'll eat large prey like frogs, which is kind of crazy for a spider. This is like a very, very large uh, prey item for an animal. Ah! It's a very large prey item for an animal that size. <laughs> the Brazilian wandering spider is thought to be one of the most venomous spiders in the world. This is him really mad. Can we make him really big? This is him when he's really mad. Me walking up to the Brazilian wandering spider. He said, get away from me. You know? He don't like me walking up to him like that. Life size. You saw it get scaled up proportionally. Um, their venom uh, contains at least six neurotoxic peptides, uh, one of which causes priop priapism in humans. Huh? Connor said, huh? Does anybody know what priapism is? Before you pee. Wow, a lot of people know what that is. I'm actually surprised. I had never heard that word before. Um, priapism is, uh, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to write it on my screen because I don't know if they're going to go. P-R-I-A-P-I-S-M. Um, it's a condition that causes a painful erection for hours in the absence of stimulation. This is educational. Okay. Kind of crazy that this guy is holding it. Um, but yeah, their, their venom causes priapism. So one of the signs of being bit uh, by one of these spiders is having a painful, long-lasting erection with no other stimulation um so 
Humans can survive a bite from a wandering spider. It is legitimately something that they look for in hospitals, though. If you're in Brazil and you come in really sick or you got a spider bite and you don't know what spider it is, they will ask you if you have an erection. Um, so you can survive a wandering spider bite with antivenom, but you will experience priapism for several days. I'm an educator. Days. From hours to days. Yeah. So a lot of people are saying Viagra. Funny that you bring that up. Um, a new treatment for erectile dysfunction just passed its first phase of human testing in Brazil in 2023 using wandering spider venom. The cool thing about this treatment is that it's topical and it uses wandering spider venom. So instead of it being Viagra, uh, where it's like a, a pill form, it's a gel that can be applied directly to the site, which works for some people that cannot take Viagra. I don't know who this guy is. I, I got a stock photo, it's transparent, so. He wasn't a part of the study, probably. Anyway, that's the Brazilian wandering spider. We have one more story to go, guys. One more story to go, and then I'll take some questions. Last story. If the horny toad wasn't my favorite one, this is my favorite favorite one. Where are we? Can you switch the slide? The last story. I'm not gonna write this because it's gonna take a while. I, the title of this is a quote, and if you recognize it, you get a cookie, congratulations. Um, it's, I'm the best at what I do, but what I do isn't very nice. Anybody? Max, <laughs> immediately. <laughs> Max, immediately. I'm the best at what I do, but what I do isn't very nice. It is a Wolverine quote. Max loves X-Men. Yes, 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 yes. This is a Wolverine quote because we are talking about... Uh, oh, I for I'm a little early. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We're, ta <laughs> we're talking about a Wolverine frog. I thought my first... I assume my first picture was of the frog, but it's about something else. We're talking about a wolverine frog. It's also called a hairy frog. I will show you why in a second. It's a frog native to Central Africa. It's about three to five inches long. It's called a wolverine frog, okay? Um, it's not unknown for animals to have retractable claws, uh, like this cat. <laughs> Cat's claws are retractable. They can put them out and take them back in. Uh, their claws are made from keratin, though. Um, Wolverine frogs technically have retractable claws, and I'm going to tell you what that means in just a second. Another crazy thing about Wolverine frogs, though, they're also called hairy frogs. Why? Because they have freaking hair. Because the males grow hair filaments during the breeding season. They have hair. How crazy. Hairy frog, wolverine frog. This is crazy enough that they're furries, okay? But what's crazier is that they're named wolverine frogs because of who? This guy. Is this Hugh Jackman? Because <laughs> of Hugh Jackman. <laughs> uh, my friend, Wolverine. What is it about Wolverine that makes him Wolverine, chat? 
I'll give you one guess. I'll give you one guess. It's his freaking claws. Yeah? Okay. He has claws. You know what else has claws? The Wolverine frog. Daniel, thank you. You ever seen a frog with claws? Claws! But wait! That's not claws. You're right. It's a bone. It's not frog claws. Also, I said they're retractable. It's not a claw. It's their bone. It's a bone. They're attached to a nodule in their toe here, and they can be disconnected from the nodule, but when it gets disconnected, it breaks through their skin and becomes a claw. Like Wolverine. Are they like Wolverine where they go back in? Nobody knows somehow. I don't know how that's possible, but they don't know because they've only studied specimens. They haven't studied live frogs. So they don't know what it looks like for them to go back in, for the claws to go back in. And what it does for the skin and if it's possible for it to happen again. But I imagine they probably can do that multiple times. Anyway, it's great for kicking, but it's uh, it's bad for frogs um, because the claws re will retreat into the toe, but we don't know exactly how the skin heals or if it's possible to connect to this bony nodule again for it to do it again. Wolverine says it hurts every time the claws come out. I have a special treat for you guys. Let's see where this uh, inspo came from, shall we? Love the beer. Look, it's a frog. Ellis Island, once the arrival point of hundreds of thousands of American immigrants, is opening its doors again. Preparations are nearly completed for the upcoming United Nations World Summit. With nearly every invitation confirmed. The event promises to be the largest single gathering of world leaders in history. The leaders of over 200 nations will discuss issues ranging from the world's economic climate and weapons treaties the suspense. to the phenomenon and its impact on our world stage. This movie's Many 24 American years old. Have contended that debate over mutant issues should be the primary focus of what is on the surface at least. This was made when I was a year old. You owe me some money. Come on, let's do this. Let's do this. No man takes a beat He like says he owes him some money, but he doesn't know that his bone can disconnect from the nodule in his toe. And break through his skin, sure. his hand. Uh oh! Ew! Ew! Sorry. I'm educator. Get out of my bar, freak! Retractable. See? Why is he looking at me like that? <laughs> I'm in the movie. Great. I'm the best at what I do, but what I do isn't very nice. That's your Wolverine frog. What did you guys think? That is the end of my Animal Kingdom stream. It's not the end of stream. I still got I, I to stream another hour, but did you learn something today? I'm in a pond. <laughs> yeah. What are the claws for? Kicking, fighting, defense.
Can I ask a question? Yes, you guys can ask some questions. Can you get that video so I can tweet it? Yes. Thank you. Can I poop out my organs? Uh, I think that's the closest thing you could do is like prolapse, but I would not recommend doing that. How long does it take for a hagfish to refill its slime? I don't know, but I think they're doing it pretty constantly. I think they can employ that defense, like... I don't know why it keeps coming up. Why am I gonna say, like, there's, like, no... What's the better word for, like, refract? There's no cooldown. A lot of people are asking what happens to women if they get by wander if they get by bit by wandering spiders. I assume there's also a similar increase in blood flow, but obviously not an erection. I don't know what you, what, what you want me to say. They still get very sick and they still need anti-venom. Whoa. <laughs> Can you guys ask some other questions before AT&T comes in here and is like, never mind. But are they edible? Wandering spiders? No. How do amphibians have hair? If you would have asked me if that's possible before doing this stream, I would have said no. So I don't know. What does the hagfish slime taste like? I have no... Ask me better questions. The hairy frogs are in Central Africa. Are the claws on all four legs or only the front legs? Actually, only the back legs which is interesting. What animal do you think wins in a fight? Who is that? It's a bird. You know, normally I don't like answering that question, but considering we just did a whole couple hours or whatever on animal defense behaviors, what behavior here do I think is the most OP? It's not the frog for sure. It's not the ant. It, mm, it might be the hagfish. Yeah, I think it's the hagfish. Wandering spider though, like if wandering spider bites any of them, bomb beetle is cool, but it's so small. You know, if they were actually, if we're actually considering if they were fighting. Th I keep getting, one guy keeps asking my opinion on sharks. Sharks are cool, man. I, I have no, I have no problems with sharks. I think they're great. But I think if a wandering spider bit a hagfish, the hagfish would probably die. So maybe it's a wandering spider. But also, if they're fighting and they're underwater, the spider dies. And if they're on land, the hagfish probably kills this. Mm. I don't know. Any other animal with a cool defense strat that you didn't include? Yeah, there are plenty. Um, one, fainting goats. When they get scared, they, they fall over. Works great. Real handy. Uh, fainting death beetles, same thing. They get scared, they flip over and act like they're dead. Works great. Does the hair on a frog make it a mammal? No, uh, that is not what makes a mammal. It is an amphibian. Are there any birds? There are, yeah, I did talk about exploding ants today. There are birds with cool defense mechanisms. There are tons of animals with cool defense mechanisms. If you want to learn more, we can do more defense mechanism Animal Kingdom streams, but I just figured reproduction was more interesting. I was planning on that being the next one. We do have porcupines in Texas, North American porcupines. It's all cool.
Do they blow up when boinking? I don't know who they is, but if you're talking about exploding ants, no, they blow up in defense, or they explode in defense. Yes, I can swim, but thank you for worrying about me. We can do more green screen educational streams. This was the first green screen stream that I did. Um, Space and I have a, it, it was good practice for us. I think we have a lot to learn. I thought a lot more about like what I could be doing with a green screen, it's really fun. Um, so yeah, we can, do, we can do more of this. We can do our Animal Kingdom streams with a green screen. Kind of sick, kind of sick, kind of a good time. I have to go to my house. Um, can we do the, the phone thing again? Okay. We're going to have, you guys are going to stay here in this beautiful pond. <laughs> Imagine I just put up the hagfish. Hagfish in the pond. Um, and I'm going to go up to my house. Before I do that, I have to pee. And then I'm going to go up to my house. And then uh, I'm going to stream for an hour at my house. Don't go anywhere. Stay here for, here, talk to Connor for a second. And I'm going to pee and then I'm going to come back and then I'm going to get the mic. I'm sponsored, don't say anything crazy. I can't believe you think I would say something crazy. You did literally last time. What did I say last time? When I was going up my house. I didn't have a mic on me. Hello? I'll just talk about the wolf enclosure because uh, that's easy and I'm not going to get her canceled. It's not custard, it is corner. So, did I say something canceled the last time? What did I say? What was this place? Do you remember? Oh, oh, okay. That's fine. My keyword. No big deal. <clears throat> I drew a rocket ship, okay? It was a rocket ship. So, all right. I can draw on this iPad. Oh, that's cool. Uh, all right, so I'm not going to say anything weird, and I'm not going to draw a rocket ship. So what we learned today is, oh, I can use red. Red, red. I don't, where is it? Oh, okay. Red. It's not selecting. All right, I give up. Um, child lock, yes. So. We learned that we ca we shouldn't weld uh, nine gauge chain link vents, uh, so we're figuring that out. So there was some welding that happens, but not a big deal. Uh, you're supposed to only weld six gauge. That's apparently the smallest you can go. The thirty by thirty, which I didn't think would be done till like end of next week, should be done on Friday. So that's awesome. This is for the wolves, guys. If you don't know, if you don't know that we're getting wolves and what I'm talking about, yeah. You, you haven't been paying attention. So, man speaks a language I don't understand. You haven't been paying attention. Chain link fence for the wolves. Did you blow through it? No, they did a good job. It just, nine, it just doesn't, it's just not going to last because, like, you only have so much material in nine gauge. So, um, long story short, the wolf enclosure is coming along better than we thought, and it's going to be a great time. Let me know when Maya's walking, then I'll shut up. Uh, and then we have our electrician coming. Should be here soon. To then wire a bunch of stuff up. So. Um, I drew a rocket ship last time, Maya. Mm -hmm. That is not anything cancelable. And I can't believe you would think that. All right, bye chat. Can't get the red to select. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Can't get the red to select. I don't know what I'm doing what? wrong. What? You're in here. Oh. That's so dumb. <laughs> now go. So this is chain link. Oh my god. Okay, should I just start going up? Yep. Um, switch your pro okay. profile to the space one. Space one.
You guys, can you hear me? Is Con can you hear Connor still? Oh! Okay, sorry, I thought he was talking. That's why I wasn't talking. Whoa! Can I drive past this? Hello? Sorry. Sorry, sorry. All right! He's talking, that's so funny. I'm driving up to my house. The handwriting, dude, Connor's handwriting is like, actually, it's actually crazy that he's, he like got a whole degree. Men, stop improving their handwriting like after third grade. I'm going to my PC. I'm going to my PC. I'm in my office. I should have booted up my computer this morning. I'm booting up my PC. I'm turning the light on. Opening OBS. Switching the profile. I am deactivating and reactivating. And it didn't work and it worked. And I'm going live and I started stream. And we can swap it when you're ready. And we're swapping. We're swapping. We're opening Discord. Hello. Oh. We're putting a sweatshirt on. And we're stopping and we're re doing it. It's not seen, so we're gonna try this one. We're turning this mic off and we're using this one.
We're putting our headset on and we're live. Chatters! <clears throat> Hello, party people. No, I will not be bringing back Connor. I'm busy. I do need to tweet, though. Hold. I'm tweeting. I was so entertained. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. All right. Mike's a little low. That's too loud now. Six second delay. Pardon? What? Great. Excellent, huh? Excellent. Excellent. Okay. I need to find something. I need to find... My, that's not it. I need to find some notes for today. Wow. Oh. Uh. They don't exist. <laughs> they exist. All right. Okay. All right. Chatters. Hello. Um, welcome back. Welcome back to the stream. Sorry about that. Technical issues. Technical issues. You know how it is. Why is your volume so low? I don't know what to tell you. It's just not. I, I, don't, I don't know why it would be. It's so loud for me right now. Like, in my ears. If you want me to crank it up to here, that's fine. But it's going to peak for sure. It, there's no way. Okay, one guy. All right. I'm turning it back down because it's peaking. Okay. Um, guys, thank you for... Uh, yeah, turn up your volume. Think about that. Thanks for being here. Um, thanks for being here for the Animal Kingdom stream. It was a good one. It was a fun one. I enjoyed it. I like teaching you guys about animals, obviously. Um, that's what my stream is. So, pretty cool. Um, shout out Mick, he helped me with the research for some of that. 
So if you saw him uh, guessing for polls, he's cheating. Just going to throw that out there. Just something that was happening. Um, <laughs> today, uh, we are sponsored by AT&T. Um, AT&T is shining a spotlight on the best up-and-coming creators uh, on the entire Twitch platform. Thank you. Uh, with their Class of program, which began in 2021. I've talked about this a bunch of times with you guys, so you already know what it is. Uh, they have mentees and mentors. Um, this year, I'm a mentor, and other mentors have been Cypher PK and the Botez sisters, and um, it's Hafu and Little Simsy and Shazam and Aiden and TP and Extra Emily and now me. Uh, it's very cool. The goal of the program is to highlight up and coming creators, um, streamers who have grinded their way to get here, and pairing them with a mentor um, to help develop their skills and further grow their communities on Twitch. Part of what AT&T is doing, Lewis, thank you. Part of what AT&T is doing for that um, is giving us promotion on Twitch's homepage, which is where I am right now. It's about, there's 11,000 of you here. Hello, hello um, from, from the homepage. Uh, incorporation into custom commercials and raids from mentors, myself. So I will be raiding one of the mentees today, Wahoo. Um, with the support of AT&T's power and technology, along with Twitch's expertise in content creation, AT&T will set each class of member on the path to success and help make their streaming dreams a reality. It's a very cool program. I'm very excited to to be a part of it, to have been a part of it uh, for these few weeks here. Um, and we only have a couple more streams with AT&T, Sag, because we love AT&T. Also, AT&T has fiber. Check to see if AT&T Fiber is available in your area. You can sign up now and get up to $150 in rewards cards. Um, and they'll also cover your cancellation fee in full. Um, you can do command ATT Fiber. Um, and there's a link to learn more in chat. Or go to fiber.att.com slash internet slash gaming. Wicked. Cool. Wicked. Cool. So, today is a masterclass stream. Today is where I tell you guys, I break the fourth wall a little bit, right? And I tell you about the stream that I just did. I explain it to you. The fourth wall! Yeah, I explained the stream to you. So context, first of all, before I go into my my tips. Um, yes, I am going to look at you again. Uh, before I go into my tips, number one, I have done these streams before, right? I've done Animal Kingdom is now kind of like a series on my channel, a very inconsistent one in fairness. But it's a series, sure, because now I've done three episodes of it. Animal Kingdom is just like a, a casual stream where I teach you guys about like funny, silly, crazy things that animals do because it's interesting. Um, and I've done the other two ones on animal reproduction. Today we did them on animal defense behaviors. Uh, but today we incorporated something different, which was really cool. Breaking the fourth wall more. I was up until, I was working in the studio until like 10.30 last night. <laughs> Jay, thank you. I was working in the studio until 10.30 last night to finish that freaking stream, even though I paid someone to do research for me as well. I have these streams take much longer than just going live um, and and uh, yapping, you know? Um, there's research, there's assets, there's like finding videos that work for you guys and putting them all in order and me and Space getting on the same page. Um, so there are a lot of work, but I also have a lot of fun doing them and I hope that you guys like them. I hope they're worth it. Yap, yap, yap. Yeah, because because they're a lot of work. Um, also, it was the first time I used a green screen today, which was cool. I liked it. And I think there's so much that I can do with a green screen. And I'm really excited about that. Connor is an asset. Yes. I'm really excited about the green screen thing. I think it'll work great. It, we had like no technical hip, hiccups with it, basically with the screen itself, um, which is really exciting. Uh, I think if Space and I had more time and more bandwidth, we could make that like a pretty crazy stream concept. It could be really fun. Oh, wow. I'm also excited to see what Danny does with that 
as a YouTube video because he has the footage recorded from the camera and OBS. Um, but from the camera, it's all just me in front of a green screen. So Danny has, you know, like two hours of me in front of a green screen to play with for the YouTube video. So the YouTube video will probably look quite a bit different, but I'm excited about that too. Danny would cook with a green screen. Admit it. So he'll do a good job. Um, you can do command tech, I think. Is it tech or I don't remember. Um, okay. Here's the plan. I'm going to run you through some of my tips for the stream that I just did. And then we're going to yap. And then I'm going to do it again. Understand? Or you can do command headset. There you go. Okay. Um, are you ready? I'm going to look you in the eyes. <laughs> Everybody stare. Excellent. Okay, tip number one, um, hide the broccoli. You may have heard me say that before. And what that means to me as an educator is hiding the educational stuff in fun stuff, just like a child when you feed them dinner. Twitch is a relatively young demographic. Mm, questionable, chatters. Any old chatters here? Twitch is typically a younger demographic um, and also are on the internet and also it's 2024 so everybody's attention span is remarkably low uh they get distracted very easily they like fast-paced high octane content um and so when you're educating people ah thank you so much thank you for the raid hello hello lovely appreciate it um guys normally i'm doing animal sanctuary conservation education stuff i was in pizza's chat yesterday or g's chat yesterday um Oh, okay. Um, but I'm doing a sponsored stream right now. <laughs> um, okay. Let me restart because I need my alerts off. Tip number one, hide the broccoli. Hide the education in the fun stuff because everybody has a very short attention span and they're all children and you have to teach them without them knowing that they're being taught. So you have to hide the educational stuff in the fun stuff so they don't even know that they're learning they don't even know that they're eating vegetables because they're having so much fun so for me conservation education sometimes that means hiding the broccoli inside of very um fun interesting stories um example today on my animal kingdom stream i did what i was talking about how there's like very little research done on this bug or done on this ant there's only one person researching it maybe you guys could become an entomologist because we need a lot of entomologists because bugs are really underappreciated cough cough chat and you didn't even realize that i was t telling you about bugs and how they're underappreciated and how we need more people studying entomology because you were so focused on how interesting it is to learn about exploding ants thoughts That's my tip number one. They explode the ants, the ants explode themselves. You can go back in my VOD if you want to see what that means. <laughs> okay. Tip number two, incorporate unique elements into your stream. Um, for me today, it was actually really new and exciting. I used a green screen for the first time and a green screen allowed me to use pictures and videos in ways that I've never really used them before. I've used lots of pictures and videos in the past for my educational content, but this time it could be life size. It could be next to me. I could interact with the animal on screen. Um, I could do a bunch of silly bits, uh, where I'm more involved in the video. And I think that's really interesting and it's different and it's easier for viewers to engage that way. Immersion was peak. How was your immersion today, chat? What'd you think? Living, breathing, loving life. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Top tier immersion, big immersion, deep immersion. I forgot you were an X-Men. I'm thinking of studying entomology. Do you have any advice? Yeah, do it. 
All right. Tip number three, know your demographic. I've said this before. Twitch is primarily male and they're primarily a younger demographic. So part of being an educator and being a streamer is knowing how to balance having interesting things and having some education and not dumbing it down too much, but not giving them too high level of information that they're going to get bored of listening to. So on Twitch, a lot of times that means incorporating things that chat likes, like emotes, like the bulge emote that I popped up right on stream today. Sometimes it means interacting with chat while you're live and knowing that that's something that keeps them engaged. Um, and sometimes it means, I, I don't know how to explain that. It's very different to teach defense strategies or teach anything to this demographic uh, from children, right? There's a lot of things that I wouldn't teach kids today that I would teach this demographic because, uh, you should clarify how that's spelled. Ah, uh, they'll cut that out. <laughs> um, there's a lot of things that I taught on stream today that I wouldn't necessarily teach kids because they wouldn't get it. But to this demographic, it's very interesting. There's a lot of things today that I would teach this demographic, but I would not try to teach a group of biologists because they already know and it would be too boring for them to learn about. Um, so you just kind of like, you know, give and take. What do, what do they already know about? What do they not know about? And, and include what they think is going to be the most interesting. That's my tip number three. Oh, I think I'm supposed to like hold up. Next time. Um, what does a biologist want to know? It depends on the biologist, right? If I was like talking to a group of entomologists, I would not be like, you guys ever heard of the ant that explodes? Because they'd be like, yes. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't know. You know what I mean? It's a pretty like forehead thing to say. Um, okay. Tip number four, be passionate about what you're streaming. This especially applies to today because I love talking about it genuinely. I love talking about animals. I love teaching people about animals. I love learning crazy things and then relaying that information. If I wasn't a streamer, I would learn this stuff and then I would like call my sister and call my friends and call my parents and be like, did you know that this, that's just how I am. And I think that excitement helps a lot when teaching people because they want to listen to something if you think that it's interesting. Be honest, chat. Are you more into bugs because of how into bugs I am? Don't lie. <laughs> yeah! Speaking of peak. Yeah! We love bugs because I love bugs and I'm very enthusiastic about bugs it helps a lot those are my four tips i will do them again shortly what do you guys think what do you think of my pro tips good tips i'm ready to be a pro streamer we did not get the wolves yet. We will be getting the wolves May 4th. We're going to have a wolf party, a wolf release party, um, where we release the wolves into their enclosure. They arrive that day, they get their vet checks, and we're going to have the people that were at the rock party come to Alveus and be a part of the celebration of the wolves getting released into their new enclosure. That is not the teaser. It is happening May 4th as well as the new project that's launching May 4th. When are you going to place the rocks in the enclosure? Excellent question. Before the wolves get here, for sure. And I'm going to do it on the LVS channel, not mine. Um, another reminder. Wow. My hype is 60, wow. The stream is sponsored by at and the stream is sponsored by at and They're highlighting up and coming creators with their class of program um, that started in 2021. They have featured more than 75 up and coming creators as mentees and they have mentors. Past mentors have been Lil Simsy, Extra Emily, Botez Sister, Cypher PK, and myself now as a mentor. 
Um, and they are working to highlight emerging creators by pairing them with mentors, by giving them promotion on Twitch's homepage, which is where I am right now. Wahoo, hello, everybody. Um, and incorporating them in cust into custom commercials and getting raids from mentors, so I will be raiding a mentee today. Um, it's cool. Uh, it's helping well-deserving streamers to grow their communities um, on Twitch by pairing them with mentors. Elevate their brands with AT&T's power and their technology along with Twitch's expertise and content creation. Uh, AT&T will set each class of member on the path to success and help make their streaming dreams a reality. So they can lorp around in peace. Life. AT&T's like, she, what did she just say? <laughs> <laughs> they're like talking to each other like <laughs> that means Yorp is a little yellow cat and he's you know he's he's happy and life is when you're sitting there and you're looking out and you're <sighs> and you're just taking it all in and you're so grateful because everything's so beautiful so it's your little yellow cat that's enjoying life and is happy but you're right at and is blorp so actually blorp life I hope they don't still have my stream on in the nutrition house. Our brand new animal care staff just started recently, and if they have my audio on right now, she's also probably really confused. Sorry, Trudy. I'll teach you about it later. Um, okay. Uh, at and also has fiber. You can check to see if fiber is available in your area. If you sign up now, you can get up to $150 in rewards cards. Um, and they'll also cover your cancellation fee in full, which is awesome. Um, you can go to fiber.att.com slash internet slash gaming, um, or you can do command ATT Fiber in chat, and you will get a link to learn more. Earn up to $150 reward by signing up online. Hooray. Do you guys have any questions by chance about the stream I did today? Or about my streaming career in general? Is there anything that you'd like to know that I can perhaps answer for you? Did you win the football game today? That has nothing to do with my streaming career. Uh, but the game's tonight, so no. I do not work with owls at this time, but I have. How did you start in conservation? I grew up on a farm, so I've always loved animals. I started working at zoos in college. And uh, when I started working at zoos, I was doing traditional conservation educational outreach, which is taking animals out in a white van to like schools, libraries, um, events, whatever, and teaching people that way. And I started doing the same thing on stream. So now I do the same thing, but virtually. Would you still be, you know what? I'm not gonna answer that question right now. <laughs> How did you decide to stream about animals in Alveus? Um, I, when I started streaming in 2019, I was doing traditional education. So I was teaching classrooms, like, you know, 20 to 30 uh, kids at a time. And when I started talking about the red-tailed hawk that I was rehabilitating on stream, I was like, wait, I can do the exact same program, but for thousands of people around the world, and I don't have to take the bird anywhere. And I was like, oh, then th this is it, obviously. That just makes the most sense. That's how I decided. Dream animal at the sanctuary. We'd love to bring in a pangolin. Uh, it's the most illegally trafficked animal on earth for their scales. Would go crazy. Why Alveus as a name? Um, Alveus is reservoir in Latin. I used to say on Twitch, because I would do so much fundraising, um, that Twitch is an untapped reservoir for doing good was my line uh because i did fundraising and i did education and i was like man people are just not knowing how how good twitch is for doing good it's an untapped reservoir for it uh and reservoir is alveus in latin reservoir alveus is reservoir in latin what video do you think got me a youtube audience uh i've had my youtube since 2019 Obviously, the biggest thing on my YouTube is the Tiny Mike series. 
I like your vlogs. Thank you very much. But we're talking about Twitch today, baby. Any Twitch questions? Are you proud of what you've what you've achieved? Yes. Did I girl boss a little too close to the sun? Yes. But yes, I'm very proud of what LVS has become. Um, it's moved very, very fast. Uh, and it is much, 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 much more today than I thought it would be at this point in my life. Are there any ambassadors upcoming after the wolves? Right now, it is the wolves and push pop. Um, but we have had conversations about several more that have not been leaked yet. We're back. So we'll see how that goes. Killer Anna, thank you for the three months. When did you realize you wanted to become a streamer? Funny question. Um, uh, <laughs> I started streaming in 2019 uh, in April. Um, and then in May, well, in April actually is when, I, is when I went viral. I had a very small period between starting to stream for fun and being all over LSF, uh, all over a Reddit um, page and meeting a ton of streamers so i very much fell into it i didn't really have a moment where i was like oh this is what i want to do it just happened how does it feel to talk to a camera that's an interesting question i don't like looking at y'all <laughs> if you mean like this i don't like talking like this but i i like i don't mind looking at you like this i i will say I've never had a problem public speaking. Um, I've actually always loved public speaking, so that probably helps. But singing streams, for example, I can sing in front of thousands of people online. Like, I can sing in front of a camera. I will not sing in front of real people. No offense. Um, when I hosted streamer awards, a couple hundred of my peers, streamers in the audience, much harder to talk in front of them than it is a camera. Which is seems obvious, but someone asked the question, so. If you didn't have Twitch income, could the sanctuary support itself long term? Absolutely not. You mean Alveus' Twitch income? Not mine. Uh, Alveus does support itself. Not through my own money. But Alveus, as a nonprofit, is completely supported by its online presence, particularly being on Twitch. It is built off of Twitch. The ad revenue, the subs, the bits, the donations on Twitch uh, is what keeps Alveus afloat. And it is entirely self-sufficient. But without Twitch, Alveus would not exist. What will you do once Elvis has reached maximum capacity? Will it ever get there? Uh, expand. Ideally. So you don't contribute any of your own money? I do sometimes. And I do pay for this land. This is my land. So. So actually, a lot. <laughs> I actually do contribute a lot. Um, but otherwise, Elvis sustains itself. Like, staff salaries and animal, uh, animal care expense, um, Elvis pays for that. Are you overstressed? Oh, ever stressed. Yes and yes. Do you hear the chicken in the morning? No, the chickens are a little too far away for me to hear them. Somebody said, why a nonprofit and why not like have schools pay for us to take the animals in? Good question, and I have a long answer for it. Number one, Alveus' demographic and the Twitch demographic is awesome for conservation education because it's a really hard demographic for most conservationists to reach. Because normally if you're teaching conservation education, you're teaching biologists that are already into it, that are older, like birders and whatever, or you're teaching young kids in schools. We have the ability to hit that middle ground where people are becoming budding voters, budding consumers, and they're ready to learn and they're not getting the information elsewhere so our responsibility i think as an educational nonprofit, is to teach this demographic so i don't want to veer off and focus on kids when we have this demographic i think it's untapped if you will um 
Second, there's no reason for us to pack up our animals and bring them to a school to teach 20 kids when we can go live and not bring the animals anywhere and teach thousands of people. It's not a good use of our resources and it's unnecessarily stressful for the animals to have to do that. And when we go live, we make money on donos, on bits, on sponsors, on um, subs, on ad rev, on Twitch. So we are making money by doing that. If you had the chance to go back in time to redo Alveus, what would you have done differently? I would have moved, I would have made it happen slower. Maybe. Any idea how many schools watch the stream? I think very few. I have done Zoom programs for kids or for classrooms, but very few of them. To be like super blunt, it's just not the best use of my time. Do you ever bring non-streamer visitors out to Alveus or virtual only? It's We're primarily vo uh, virtual. We're not open to the public. Um, there's like occasional family friends that come into town, you know, and, and come visit. My family visits often. So there's that. But most of, mostly no. Mostly no visitors. Can you hear the macaws from your house? Yes. Hi, Joan. Welcome. Do you feel like you can't take off days? Yes. Any carnivorous predators at Alveus except for wolves? Uh, sure. Oh, that we have. Uh, we have foxes. Um, scorpions, <laughs> technically. They, they count. Can you build a skate park at Alveus? No. If you could rebrand your Twitch name, what would your username be? I have no idea. I have no idea. I have fully accepted that my name is Maya on Twitch. There was a time it started, um, prepare for the leak. When I made my Twitch account, it was Maya Higa, which is my name. Um, and then I, it got changed to Maya, which is actually a sick username. Um, it's really cool that I, that Twitch helped me get that username. Um, so it's fine. I do kind of wish I had a username though, like everybody else. Probably be better for me, but I don't know what it would be. Does it feel too personal sometimes when everyone knows your name? Um, I think it's a blessing and a curse. I think that uh, having a username can be, especially when your friends are only streamers and they only call you your username, it can lend a lot to dissociating. And like not feeling like a person and just feeling like your stream character. So I think it's actually a blessing that it's my first name and that people call me by my name. I think that helps with grounding quite a bit. Um, it's a curse that everyone knows my name. <laughs> do you ever do raids? I will be raiding a mentee today from AT&T's class of program. If you mean raids as in like, wow, no. <clears throat> You come across as a confident person. Do you ever have doubts about improvements you make? Have you regretted any of the things you've done with the sanctuary? Uh, yes. Wait, what was the question? Do I have doubts about... Your name's not Sean? Sorry. Do I have doubts about the improvements that you make to the property? Yeah, totally. Dude, I don't know what I'm doing. Should we, should we acknowledge that really quick? I don't know if I come across as a confident person, that's great and all, but I'm 25 years old and I'm the founder and executive director of a nonprofit that has seven employees. That's not chill at all. <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on. I don't even know how I did this. I don't know how I founded the nonprofit. I don't know how I got nonprofit status. I did all these things, like, don't get me wrong. Like, they're all, they're all done. Like, but like, I don't know how I did it. I genuinely could not do it again. I don't know how that happened, I blacked out. So do I ever question the decisions that I make every single day? Every day, yes. Do I question why I'm 25 years old leading 30 plus year olds that work for me full time every day that have years more of experience than me in animal care every day? Yes, yes, I do think about that often. I actually talked to my therapist about it this morning. But you know, you do what you can, you do what you can, you make it work you, uh, day by day. Yeah. 
day by day. I'm looking for more questions. I'm looking for more questions. Um, do you have a plan on what you'll do with Pokey tomorrow? Yeah, Pokey's coming for a collaboration tomorrow. Pokey main, a Twitch star, if you will, will be here on her channel on Twitch. Um, and we're doing a collaboration stream. So she'll be meeting all of the animals at Alves. I'll be teaching her, which means I'll be teaching her audience about all the animals, um, you know, pass along some, some conservation education. And it'll be great. Do you think having a therapist is essential in becoming successful? I think every single person should have a therapist. If if that's something that you can do. If you have insurance that covers therapy, you should you should just do it. Even if you feel like you're fine. Therapy's sick, for real, for real. For real, for real, no cap. Do the streamers ad rev go to Alves when collabing? No, but the streamers that come to Alves typically set up Twitch charity while we're live. So their community fundraises for Alves while they're here. Which is very nice. Would you ever open up a second animal sanctuary? And if so, which state or location would be a dream? Uh, I super, super don't want to do that um, <laughs> at this moment in time. Uh, if I had to gun to my head or squirt gun to my head, um, I would open one in LA for sure, just for the sake of collaborations, but I cannot imagine. LA is not natural. It's not about LA. Nothing about LA is something... Okay. Be more positive. The reason that I would want to be in LA is because it's a hub for streamers, and so it would be much easier for collaborations. Do you have any secret projects you're not telling us about? Yes. <laughs> would you support someone else opening a sanctuary in your name? Absolutely not. Do you sometimes feel left out not living in LA? No. Do you have any goals as far as big guests that you hope will want to visit Alveus one day? Uh, yeah, a couple. T-Pain <laughs> is one of them. Um, Hank Green is another. Mr. Beast, <laughs> perhaps? Did you ask Hank? No, I'm not on a, I'm not on a comms basis with Hank or a first name basis, but Lud asked for me, smile. <laughs> How much do you think is the chat influencing you? In what way? I don't understand your question. Who's the next streamer you're going to paint? Nobody. Probably. Are you the tiny house person? Yep. Guess so. Um, guys, quick reminder. We have some assets on screen here. We are sponsored by AT&T today. AT&T has a class of program. Uh, started in 2021. 
It is uh, a mentor mentee program. So they have a bunch of mentees. They've featured over 75 mentees. And then they've had mentors that are streamers like Extra Emily, Cypher PK, It's Hafu, Lil Simzy, the Botez sisters, and now myself. Uh, they pair mentees up with mentors. Um, at and is supporting them by helping them get raids from mentors. So I will be raiding a mentee today. Uh, they give them front page promotion, incorporate them into custom commercials, um, and give promotion to them on Twitch's homepage, which I'm on right now. Hello, toothbrush, thank you. Um, so that's very cool. Um, it's helping to highlight emerging creators and with the support of AT&T's power and their technology, along with Twitch's expertise in content creation, uh, AT&T will set each class of member on a path to success to achieve their streaming dreams. Wahoo. Uh, also, AT&T has fiber. You can check to see if it's available in your area. You can sign up now and get up to $150 in rewards cards, and they'll cover your cancellation fee in full. Fiber.att.com slash internet slash gaming, uh, or you can do command att fiber, and you can earn a $150 reward by signing up online. Hashtag ask, what is your streaming dream? Uh, Alveus is my streaming dream. I think my streaming dream is to have an animal sanctuary and to teach as many people about conservation as possible. So that's good, because I, I am doing that. Will you and Cutie do a gala last year? Uh, I don't know, that's a Cutie question. That's Cutie's gala, not mine. I just hosted, or co-hosted. Would you ever want to work towards having marine animals at Alveus? Um, Probably not. It's very, very expensive. Timbo, thank you for the 10. Thank you so much. Um, it would be very, very expensive to get tanks um, and people to clean them and, and whatever. That's, that's a lot. A lot of people are, maybe it's just one guy, but uh, people are asking if I'm willing to hire interns. Um, not at this moment, no. Uh, hiring here is very hard. We have to be very careful about hiring here. We can't just like put up a job posting and be like, anybody? <laughs> Because obviously, like, a ton of, <laughs> a ton of chatters would be like me. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's not the same. Any other questions about streaming? What's it like working towards a goal with no finish line? Oh, you, it's great. I'll hire Sean. Um, thank you for the two months. What's your favorite part about sit-down streams? How do you um, your work -life balance? Oh, that's a hilarious question. Uh, I Sit-down streams I like because I like the sitting part. How do you manage a work-life balance? Um, the hard thing, there it, it is hard to be... Streaming is very cool, but it's also like your life, right? So it, you get into this weird place sometimes where like you're going to do something cool and you're like, oh, this would be so good for stream and you can just go live. So it can be hard to like make that balance. It's not a nine to five. It's not like you go to work, you come home and then you're like not at work anymore. <laughs> so work-life balance can be hard, um, but you just have to be really, really, really intentional about it. You got to cut yourself off. You know, you got to be like, I'm not streaming right now. I'm not working right now. I'm clocking out is my new phrase at the end of the day. Sometimes it's really late, but you know, I do say I'm clocking out. Twenty twenty three twenty twenty three annual financial report. Um, I am ninety five percent finished with. Um, we just have to get the numbers checked over by our CFO, and then it will be released on our website. This is the longest stream you've ever done by yourself. Twenty one hours, I think. Did you ever get anxiety before hitting the go live button and what point did that go away? I used to, yeah. I don't know at what point it went away. I don't remember a moment where I was like, wait, I'm not anxious about this anymore. It just is what it is.
What do you think you'd be doing now if you never started streaming? Uh, working at a zoos, probably. Same thing. Conservation, education, outreach. Have you considered doing podcasts? Uh, yeah, I have a podcast. I have a podcast called Wine About It. It's with Cutie. Um, do you think streaming is a worthwhile start now, or is it too oversaturated to be worth, Sean? Um, no, I, I actually, I think it's a really great time to start, because I think there's so many people on Twitch, and so many people that, like, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of discovery right now. You see people pop in, popping up all the time. Jinxie? Queso? Like, where? I, I, like, I don't know. I feel like there's always somebody that's popping up. You never know. Do you plan your streams ahead of time, or do you go live at your own pace? I used to go live and just be like, what are we doing today, guys? I do not do that anymore. I can't remember the last time I did that. Genuinely. Like, years, I think. <laughs> I, all of my streams are done with some intent. There is some plan for every stream that I do. People Candle, that is the plan. I go live and I'm singing. Did you get a degree? I have a degree in agriculture. I have a, a BS in agriculture. How do streamers plan streams? From streaming friends, research? It depends. Um... I just kind of base streams off of what does the best, right? Like, right now the people love IRLs, so I gotta go out and like do a bunch of random stuff. I gotta play football, I gotta play basketball, I gotta do skateboarding. I gotta do blah 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 blah. So it's kind of just like what does well. Are you going to bring back meal prep Mondays? Yeah, probably not, because they weren't doing well. It's also part of planning, streaming. Tennis one soon. How do you separate the famous stream Maya from the regular person Maya? Is that a stressful thing? Uh, this is not even me being humble. I don't think that there's a separation. That there's not. That is not. I, it's not like when I go out in public, people are like, "Oh, Maya, 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 are you a bit like?" It's that's not a thing. <laughs> that's not a thing. Um, streamers, you know, streamers get recognized in public, whatever. But it's it's like very chill and doesn't happen often. What's the story here? I just said I was going to play tennis, I think. And now, now people want to play tennis. Do you watch other streamers when you are relaxing or just vibe? Okay, interesting. In the, the last year, not at all. I showed you guys my, my stream report. I only watched Alveus ever. I don't think I clicked into a single other streamer's stream for like a whole year, um, which is kind of messed up of me. I understand. Uh, now, every day, because I'm back into collabing and you just like, you have to get to know these streamers' communities and you have to like get to know the meta so that when you go on their stream, you can farm and you can make their chat like you. It's like, so once you start collabing with other people, you gotta like, you gotta watch streams again. So I have been watching streams again. I've been watching Hassan play that stupid game. I've been watching Nick, you know, sit at his computer and talk about nothing. It's, it's, collabing is one thing, and now I have another part of my job. Which is research. <laughs> Will you travel to LA for collabs again? Yeah, eventually. Probably. In all my spare time. All right, you guys ready to hear some tips from my stream today? The stream that I did today. Are you ready? Today I did a animal defense stream, my animal kingdom stream. I am going to look you in the eyes, a fair warning. <laughs> fair warning, I'm gonna look you in the eyeballs right now. Okay? Okay. Um, tip number one, hide the broccoli. You gotta know your audience and you have to know when they're gonna get bored and you have to know 
uh, when they're going to be excited about things. Part of being an educator on Twitch is hiding the educational stuff in fun stuff so they don't even know they're learning, like feeding a kid vegetables in their favorite food. Hide the broccoli. That's what I do with y'all. Because you're really smart. You don't even know that you're learning. Because I'm putting education in with other fun stuff. You're so smart. Tip number two, incorporating unique elements. So today I used a green screen for the first time, which was really cool uh, because I got to use photos and videos in a way that I've never used them before. I got to interact with photos. I got to interact with videos. It felt like I was in the video. And it's cool to incorporate new unique elements into your streams that chat is not necessarily used to so that they stay engaged. Fun, first time green screen stream, wahoo. So cool, where are your bangs? Oh yeah, I did have bangs earlier. Where did they go? Oh, they're not straight anymore. Wait, for the, dude, for the cut consistency, I can't have bangs all of a sudden? How could you do that? How could you do that to at and Okay. Tip number three, know your demographic. On Twitch, it's relatively young. It's primarily male. Uh, and for me, that's really special for conservation education because it's a really hard demographic for most people to reach. Um, but you also have to know what they're interested in, what their level of knowledge is, what's going to bore them because it's too low level and what's going to lose them because it's too high level. So you have to work in between those places and know what's going to be interesting to your viewers. Okay. That's tip number three, chat. That's you guys. It's you guys. All right. Um, tip number four, be passionate about what you're streaming about. For me, it's very easy to do educational streams and to talk about animals and to be really passionate about it because I am. I love teaching people about animals. If I was not streaming the education, if I learned something cool about an animal, I'm calling my friends and telling them about it and being like, can you believe this? So it's something that comes really natural to me because I am passionate about it and I think it helps make me easier to watch. I think people like learning from people that are excited about things. It makes them excited about things. And it's super important for my streams. Kangaroos do not lay eggs. <laughs> AT&T again is like, why did she just say that? Um, sorry, it was a first time chatter. Uh, they do have, th Never mind. I'll tell you later. They have really inter they're really interesting in terms of reproduction though, but they don't lay eggs. Those are my four tips. What do you guys think? Good tips. Excellent. Sorry for looking you in the eyes. We have a couple more minutes for questions. You guys got anything else? Let me tell you one more time that I'm sponsored by AT&T. They have a class of program. Began in 2021, featuring up and coming creators as mentees, uh, pairing them with mentors like myself, Extra Emily, Cypher PK, Botez Sisters, Lil Simzy, It's Hafu, etc. AT&T is helping us with promotion on Twitch's homepage, Wahoo. Um, and sorry, my viewer count's right here. Yours is not, I don't know why I did that. Um, and with incorporation into custom commercials and raids from mentors. So I will be raiding a mentee today. Very cool. Um, really cool to be able to highlight these creators and the work that they've already put in and help them accomplish their streaming dreams. Also, AT&T has fiber. Um, if you want to check if fiber is available in your area, you can sign up now online and get up to $150 in rewards cards. And they'll also cover your cancellation fee in full. You can go to at and fiber.att.com slash internet slash gaming or command at and fiber in chat and you'll get a link to earn up to $150 in rewards by signing up online. How has the Alveus How has the Alveus live cams impacted the growth and revenue of the nonprofit? Having live cams on Twitch for Alveus is the best decision that we've ever made as a nonprofit. Um, it is the single largest source of income that we have by miles. 
just by having 24 7 channel on twitch it's awesome it's awesome other streaming questions if not in the usa what country would you live in i don't know i guess brazil because the amazon that's because i was just there how's the children's book going my children's book is written uh i've sent in some some illustrations we're waiting on sending to a publisher right now i'm writing a children's book on bugs and why you should be nice to them i wrote i should say um so i'm working on publishing it Hooray! And I will also illustrate it. Hooray! Do you have photographers that you work with or shoot any photography yourself? I don't do much photography myself. Most of the stuff that goes out on our socials is taken with our phones. Um, but uh, we do have some photographers, videographers as well. Are there any requested ambassadors that you will not get? I see you said that a couple times. I don't really understand your question. If you mean like if someone's asked me to take something and I've said no, yes. Last year, uh, someone asked if we could take seven blue and gold macaws, like Tico. We have one blue and gold macaw, and it's just not a possibility for us. New streamer advice. Um, just stream what you like streaming, or it's going to be miserable. I would recommend streaming what you like doing instead of chasing metas that you don't like doing. Because you'll be miserable and chatters can tell. <laughs> Me watching clips. <laughs> How many monitors do you have? You're not going to believe this. Two. How many monitors is ideal? At least three, if not four. For streaming. How long do you suggest streaming? You know, when I started streaming, it was normal for me to do longer ones, like be live like six hours, seven hours. Um, nowadays, I'm never lo live longer than four hours and I like it way better. Um, it's way easier for me to like keep my energy up and not have stream like die down. And it makes streaming for me feel like more of an event. It's like, all right, I'm like, here's the stream. Here's like the two hours of, of content. And then, uh, and then it's over, as opposed to just, like, being live all day. Um, that's hard for me to do. I used to do it. I don't know. I don't know. It's different for everybody. All right, guys. Again, big shout-out to AT&T for sponsoring the stream. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you to AT&T. And I'll see you on the next stream. That was just me saying that to the camera. I also am going to end stream, but not right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I am rating, um, Cozy Games. Today is... I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I have Discord sounds on. Today is... Wednesday. Tomorrow is Thursday, which means we have our collaboration with Pokey. All the collabs this week are at 2 p.m. CT. So be ready at 2 p.m. CT every freaking day, okay? Tomorrow's Thursday, we have Pokimane, Hyun, and Arya Saki at 2 p.m. CT. The next day is Friday, we have X Choco Bars at 2 p.m. CT. The next day is Saturday, we have uh, Angel's Kimmy. The next day is Sunday, we have Valky Ray. The next day is Monday, we have Foosley. And then the next, on Thursday, is Julian Salamita at 2 p.m. CT, okay? It is a busy, busy, busy week for collabs, okay? It's about to be crazy. So 
be ready. And it's all, all the collabs are on their channels, okay? So make sure to find it on their channels. Thank you guys for watching today. Thank you for being here. Thanks for hanging out. Um, thank you, AT&T, for sponsoring the stream. And I will see you guys tomorrow for the Poke collab on Pokemon's channel. I'll be on Pokemon's channel tomorrow. For real, for real, I can't believe it. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.